We have a guest in the studio, John Alan Namu, investigative journalist and founder of Africa Uncensored. There you go. Yes. Karibu sana to Kenya's biggest conversation. Asante, asante. Good to have you again here. Thank you for having me back. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. It's, it's always a pleasure. Asante. A lot's happening in the country, John. I've got to start with uh, just <sighs> asking you off the bat. I, I don't know. I feel, I feel sad that we're back here. I feel... Um, uh, like I was just saying when, when, when we were about to go on air, I feel like it's an incredibly important time and, and an incredibly strange time for this level of selfishness. I, I don't understand what it is about the signs of the times that our political class just doesn't seem to see. The wolf is at the gate, right? In fact, there are several wolves. Uh, several it's wolves, a yes. right? Mm. And here we are bickering you know and in in fights that may be couched in language that seem to be in the public interest but if if we are really honest with ourselves if we are really really honest in, with ourselves whose interests there is nothing about public here mm -hmm. whose interests are we fighting for whose interests are we demonstrating for you might be going there in all honestly honesty to demonstrate and it is your right mm. and i agree with the fact that people need to go and pick it mm. because it's it's a tough time for everyone. Yeah. But surely, I mean, the way things are being couched right now, the language, the brinkmanship, that sort of thing, it's language for a different, completely different time, different set of circumstances. Mm. And I just don't think that our political class especially appreciates just how deep in the, in the mud we are mm. as a country, but also within a very tough global context. You know, so John, wouldn't you say that perhaps what we are now seeing is something we we need to t be cognizant of and we need to take full stock of because mm. you then see your leaders in their true element. That's true. And then you place yourself in a position where you can determine through the action where you fall into the priority list. You as, mm -hmm. a, as a Kenyan who is supposed to be represented by these people. That's mm -hmm. true. But then CT, I would ask, and then what? Mm. Right? So and then, so now I know mm -hmm. that I am far down the pecking order in mm -hmm. terms of their priorities. Mm -hmm. And then what? These are still the people who need to legislate. These are still the people who need to lead and get us out of the mess. They're still the leaders that we chose for yeah. better or worse. And then what? You, you know, know? This, it's, it's a good, uh, this is where we get in this one. Uh, John Alan Namu, you've asked a very important question. <laughs> no, thank you very much. See, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, but I mean, it's, it's a dilemma for all of us to resolve. It I guess. is a dilemma, yeah. but it's a yeah. dilemma which has direction. You know why? Mm. Hmm? The reason why many antisocial behaviors mm -hmm. are curtailed is because communities and the society will not tolerate it. That is true. That is fact. Mm. We tolerate mm -hmm. all this nonsense mm. that our political leaders throw at us. We tolerate it. Mm. And in toleration, we may not see it, but we seem to be enhancing it. Yeah, by we are enablers. It. Yeah, by normalizing. Yes, we are enablers. Mm -hmm. Okay, we may think we are not, but we are enablers. Mm. When you look at the clips that are doing the round, the things people are saying, you're wondering, what the X, Y, Z is yeah. this? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And some of this free reign, some of them, the leaders themselves are there. Mm. And there's some... Pouring candy. gas on yeah, the, Yes, and you're thinking, the... what on earth do yeah. these people think they are doing? Yeah. Now, mm. when you see that, and there's a crowd cheering, mm -hmm. now you tell me, if that isn't enabling, what is it? I don't know. I really don't have the answer. Because you tell me, mm. if a leader came up and said, or people allowed came up and said their own things, and the crowd told them, where away, where away, yeah, mm. go away, shut up, mm. uh, you would suddenly find all that nonsense mm. toning down. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, there was a time when we were taking this hate speech matter seriously. Yeah. Right? What brought in the term Kamata Kamata Friday? Mm. And individuals who would just speak willy nilly, said some of the craziest things, mm. got arrested. That's true. I think for me the the best example of like active citizenship is uh, immediately after Kibaki took power. Do you remember that feeling yep. that this is my country? Mm. Mm. I must take charge of it. 
if there's a policeman who is bribing somewhere out there it's my Checking mandate right. to make sure that this person doesn't do that mm. i think um you know difficult times also create strong people so mm. that i guess is the upside to this mm. we must find that strength as a country to now actually tell these guys off and tell them this is not how we want to be led we want a country in which our futures are secure our children's future is yeah. secure yeah. and and we get to a point where we're not pleading with them yeah. you know you know everybody is pleading, Fadali, that's everybody is pleading. Oh, yeah. religious leaders are pleading yeah, yeah. the leaders oh, gosh, please talk you see the language you know please yeah. oh my benevolent oh hi <laughs> it's also your country yeah. you know hey. we are pleading with yeah. Ireland, pleading with president Ruta yeah, yeah. to please dialogue no come we are on pleading with no, pleading no, no, to no. please dialogue it's our I mean, lives exactly yeah, yeah. and these people mm. are maintained by our taxes exactly and when they are disrupting our lives we mm. actually get more affected yes all yes. they get in fa- in terms of effect is uh so mm. your security has been withdrawn to mm. cops but they'll come back seven of them next week but you still have cops uh, you know who are playing you know, clothes they're still there you know it's just it, that it's, the it's, visible it's, cop is gone but the cop is not gone you know it is it, that's such a good point eric i don't even know how how good the point you say you know that you're making like it's this performative angst that these guys have against each other oh nakusumbua wewe okay sir i've you taken away your security mm. then now you posture and, but at the end of the day they know each other and we know that next week this guy is going to have their security back this person is going to be okay and the wheels go round and round you know and then we are the ones who are left there holding all of this anger that they've put into you know they've pumped into our society mm. what do we do with that mm. it's a really toxic relationship if mm-hmm. ever there was one indeed you know. city just mm. remind us today's proverb it's from guinea yes guinea N- and it's about a journey yes it is, is it? to make preparations does not spoil a journey mm. to make preparations does not spoil a journey no it doesn't kujipanga na mapema mapema ndio best what's your interpretation of it John? to make to make preparations does not spoil a journey no a trip they actually say trip but mm. let's call it journey because a trip is a journey um okay so my interpretation is this look at me putting my phone here and um my you're interpretation you're going live, right? i am going live <laughs> while you guys are live but that's perfectly uh, all right yes, yes. um so yeah, everyone said no i'll turn it in my direction also. oh yes <laughs> okay. Okay. you're you right this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so to make to make uh, to make plans mm. yes. does not spoil a journey i think okay me i'm interpreting it in a very different way um and it's and i'm interpreting it now from the the proverb from today like actual proverbs from from the bible mm. so there's a part in proverbs 19 i think that says i'm paraphrasing but you know man plans but god you know purposes and mm. so um where we're saying that we're making preparations for a specific kind of journey we don't know the trip that we're going on so it, it either way we're not going to be able to spoil whatever journey so it doesn't it, it doesn't make or spoil it doesn't make or spoil there's still a journey ahead yeah. mm. so that's how i look at it mm. yeah interesting, interesting perspective Sorry. Mm. interesting perspective i might be wrong but you know, city. who says when yeah. it comes to perspectives you cannot possibly be wrong <laughs> yeah because it's your perspective that's a true. million yeah. points to you john that's mm. true thank mm. you thank you ndu yeah? i'm feeling generous today <laughs> <laughs> as we are talking about yeah. where we are yeah. economically yes we are struggling and we are faced with big issues right mm. we have seen all the signs even the government itself the cs for the national treasury saying brace for tough times mm-hmm. the prime cabinet secretary saying brace for tough times uh even the president saying you know what guys <laughs> yeah I've got things are thick limited wiggle room right we are where we are because we started somewhere mm. and with uh, african sense that you've started also investigating yeah this thing we are saying that you know our debt is almost 10 trillion shillings mm. in a 13 trillion shilling gdp mm-hmm. how did we get here do we actually have this debt and all tell us about it um so it's it's one of the most okay let me let me put it this way looking at our debt situation um it you get a sick feeling in the pit of your stomach because what what you're finding what what we are finding as we just look back and trying to analyze where we've come from is such deep disregard for this country 
such deep disregard for this country to the extent that you manipulate laws, you manipulate legislation, mm. you take loans that you're not supposed to, you switch around the terms of loans and in an incredibly, um, you know, fa in a fashion to, to, as to say that you don't care about where this country is headed. Mm. That for me is a big thing about the series that we're doing. That, so let me give you an example, right? From a story that I'm thinking about whether I'm going to put it in there. Mm. But there's a certain prominent road, right? Um, and it's not the expressway, because mm. mm. that one has its own drama. Yeah. But there's a there's certain- another prominent one. There's a certain prominent road right. that leads into the countryside mm. that was financed by one of these multinational development banks, i.e. Kenya took a loan mm. to mm. be able to finance it end to end, right? right? So, so we've taken the loan. Mm. Then somewhere on our books, we go to the local market, borrow from the banks to pay for the road that was financed by the loan. So we've borrowed twice, basically. Right. And this is not 10 million or 20 million. This is hundreds of millions, if not billions of shillings. John, sorry, Very I'm, I'm going to need you road. to say that again. Um, so mm. we road go to project. a bank. Okay. Road project right. is designed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's legitimate. We go to a bank, a multinational bank. Mm. We borrow from that bank, right? Mm. We get the money, at least phases of the money. Mm -hmm. In our budget, we say we have taken from this bank, mm. right? Then we go and borrow from the local market. So mm. we issue a bond, mm -hmm. like an infrastructure bond, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And then borrow from the local market, from guys who buy bonds from banks, etc., mm. right? To finance the same, same road. road. Mm. road going worth in, in into the billions mm. all right right so we've borrowed twice yeah so we've borrowed from the multinational bank we've also borrowed from the local market and that money that either comes from the local market or from the multinational bank cannot be seen where so it's wait gone. wait so is the road built partially <laughs> the road is partially built. partially the uh, road is not finished i was on that road a month or two ago. But the money uh, was you will given it. in full. The money was given. That road, John Allen, was to be finished in January last year. It was supposed to have been finished like, yes, mm -hmm. maybe like a year or two ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, as we continue talking, I can already see what You can see the road that you're talking <laughs> about. Going down the road. And you understand <laughs> okay. uh, how important okay, it is. Folks, mm. Yes. Which part of the country is this road? <laughs> <laughs> this road it, leads in. It heads north. Yes. Okay. It is part of the Great North Road. Okay. Yeah. Even I can see the road. You now. can see the road, right? And I can see it incomplete. Mm. Yes. Mm. So, yeah. in the books, mm. we have taken a loan mm. from this development bank yes. to build the road. Yes. Do the books also say mm -hmm. that we have taken the infrastructure bond or whatever name of the bond to build the same road? Yes. Or do the books say we have taken this so that we can refinance the loan that we have, blah, blah, blah? It's to build. What, what are we refinancing? <laughs> you know, what, what are we refinancing? It's to build the road. Like, you see, that's the thing, Eric. And what's the difference in the amounts? How much? No, no, it's the same amount. <laughs> hey, yeah, okay. It's the same amount. Okay. So a billion dollars from A and a billion dollars from Let me, let me tell you, local. Eric, when, when I saw this, I looked at the summary of all of the work that I've done as a journalist. And I thought to myself that... All of the billions or millions of people that we've exposed pale in comparison to the kind of mismanagement that we have endured over the past 10 years. You see what, um, remember that uh, gentleman from Ghana who was here, I think, was it last week? Yes. Yep. Exactly what he was saying happened in Ghana happened here. Exactly. Only that we didn't build a cathedral. We didn't build a cathedral, but we built private cathedrals for people, I'm sure, in their homes and mm. swimming pools and financed their, you know, their offshore banking accounts. We did all of these things, right? But <clears throat> what for me, and, and maybe just to switch uh, focus a little bit, seems strange. Um, and, and here now we're talking at continental level. I, I was just thinking about it as, as on my way here. Mm. Doesn't it seem strange? that we can have exactly the same situation as another country. Exactly. Yeah. 
right? Doesn't it seem strange and it's not just one or two or three countries. Mm. Look at the number of countries that were that have taken euro bonds yeah. since 2013. By the time we were joining, we were, the, the time we were issuing our bond, 11 countries had already taken. The 11 African countries. 11 African countries. Yeah. Yeah. How many right of those countries are struggling with debt? Oh, are you kidding? Nigeria has just the other day said that uh, mm-hmm. it cannot feed its people. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine a country of what? 200, 200 million, million plus it, 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 mm. yes. saying that it cannot feed that is a recipe Food for crisis. disaster. But who benefits from this disaster? That's that's the bigger question we also have. And how ask. local are they? Exactly. Right. Because I mean you're talking about if it's all these then yeah. definitely it can't just be one it player. It can't just be some yeah. local players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got to be, you know, a bigger cabal. Mm. It's quite it's quite So anyway, yeah, go ahead. A Sorry. couple of steps back. Mm. So you have been doing this investigative journalism on debt and mm. the debt situation and now you're releasing it in bits yep. indebted Kenya's journey to a debt crisis yep. right have you completed your investigations or are you still doing them? pretty much and how f- how long has it taken you to actually dig into this well it it hasn't taken very long fortunately i think um may, maybe maximum about 3 uh, three and a half months at maximum mm. the good thing is that a lot of the content that we just needed to scratch the surface was already there so part of the story that we're telling it's part investigative but also part analytical the reason that we've broken it down into bits is because we thought that it's important for Kenyans to be able to walk through the story slowly mm. and understand why this um, loan is connected to this debt and this decision is connected to that consequence and being able to just put it all together at once it might be satisfying for you know for someone to watch all the way through but i think for us it's more public education about where we we've come from mm. so yeah in large part the investigation is complete there are one or two things that i think we will add to the final part of the investigation which will be out in 3 weeks mm. um that has to do now with the nature of the eurobond um but but largely um what we wanted to do was track all the way until William Ruto becomes president mm. Mm. but you see now there's so many things that have happened in Since just then. these 10 months <laughs> and now I'm thinking gosh do we need a fifth part <laughs> you know um but but what what the story is essentially is um it, it's really unfortunately a story of of really deep mismanagement of this economy paired with corruption and the use of debt both by locals and I'd say um even though we don't have this in our story i'd say also by certain foreign interests mm. to ensure that kenya is in the situation that it is today because it is of benefit to some folks it is. for kenya to be in this position it, it is of benefit it's always someone always benefits what's when the benefit the, if you're indebted you have much less agency to be able to talk about the kinds of deals that you get into they become lopsided if you're indebted you be, you have much less agency to talk about what kind of things that you're going to pawn off to ensure that your debts are paid if you're indebted there are certain strategic geo, um, geopolitical interests that you must bow to um to in order to just remain part of the the international community but i think worse still if you are indebted you are not able to um deliver for your people you are constantly in a position where you have to lie to your members of the public especially given the kind of um, sort of unsanitary politics that we have mm. i don't like the word unsanitary because no, no politics is ever sanitary but mm. i think the, the better word is um is sadistic um politics that we have right because there's some sadism in in our politics <laughs> now it keeps us in that situation it keeps us down i think for me the the other story that that people need to start to tell um, and you guys have been doing a good job of it with the interviews that you've been doing is what's the impact right so what's the impact to members of the public people who like for instance a guy who came and talked here about um, pending bills mm. right businesses have closed down lives have been devastated all across the country but um and this is interestingly where i have some convergence of opinion with uh, jimmy wanjigi it is a moment like no other that we have been handed you know um mm. because the kind of selfishness 
has the, the unintended consequence of really, like you were saying, CT, exposing what kind of leadership we have, mm -hmm. exposing what kind of things we need to do with our country and giving us the, the choice. Do we want to move forward as a country, as a nation that has this kind of leadership? Or do we want to really take, even if it's 10, 15 years, because it's going to take a long time to get out of this crisis, mm -hmm. to fix what our country is supposed to be so that, you know, the future we generations... Can, we can protect them. Can be protected. For us to do that, we must mm. understand and accept yeah. the things that have happened. Mm. We must see them, mm. we must accept them, and then we must understand how they happened. Yeah. And that's part of what you're doing exactly. with your with your recent expose. Exactly. I just mm. want to hear whether what you're saying is that this has been a calculated scheme mm. to actually lead us to where we are. Okay. Right? All right. John Alan Namu is an investigative journalist, award-winning founder of the Africa Uncensored. He has a new investigative and analytical series out. And you can find it on YouTube, Indebted, Kenya's Journey to a Debt Crisis. Uh, two episodes already out. Mm -hmm. And you're doing them in bits. Doing them in bits. The third one goes out next week. One per week. But one every two weeks. One every two weeks mm. with a lot of water. Yes. Uh, you go, you get your soon popcorn, after you, you wake come up. back. <laughs> deep breaths. Deep breaths. Yeah, deep breaths. <laughs> deep breaths. Yeah. Uh, because of what he's talking about. Mm. Where? Yeah. Indebted Kenya's journey to a debt crisis. African Census has been investigating our debt situation in the country. And basically what John Alanamu has found out is that he, Kenya, the Inchia Maja. Bas. Jambazi. <laughs> Majambazi. <laughs> Imenda. Hey, Imenda. Hey, inaenda hii. Kisipofanya nini something. Mm. Inaenda hii. So when you're looking at the debt, various debts, yeah. you're looking at our domestic borrowing, mm. our international borrowing, everything is anchored in law yes. in this country. Yes. Have you found things that point towards illegalities mm. that have committed? Illegalities, irregularities, um, deliberate irregularities. I'd say deliberate. So I'll, I'll give you an example. This, mm. this one is from episode two, right? Mm. So I, I can talk about it. So with the euro bond as an example, mm. right? So any money that we borrow, um, before it starts getting, you know, paid out, at that time was supposed to hit the consolidated fund, right? So ikuja kwanza. It enters our country, it enters our bank account, then mm. we decide, okay, so, so this is a project, this is how we're going to finance it, this is where it's supposed to go. That's our account. That's as part and of public finance law. management law, mm. right? M management act, I, sh I should say. Mm. But what does parliament do? It changes certain parts of the law mm. to now say that um, people who, um, you know, various people, there's various categories of people who've, who've been uh, listed there, yeah. um, who as long as they're, they're um, part of a bilateral agreement, a government to government agreement, yeah. then now you can be paid directly from whatever sources, right? <laughs> You understand? What like mean? like what, just being paid what out other sources would we like would being be? being paid out without there being some sort of accountability within the within the from the consolidated fund. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So meaning that if you're a if you're a contractor that has been, you know, hired under government to government agreement, then you know there's certain ways in which you can be paid which you couldn't access that money before. And therein now the, therein lies the rub. So I want to go back I'll I'll look for the law here as mm -hmm. we're talking just so that I can I can list to you exactly what it is that um, you know. But the the bigger the one of the things that we found with the euro bond was mm. that first okay fine it didn't hit the consolidated fund right mm. mm -hmm. it, uh, or rather it didn't hit the consolidated fund until the syndicated loan that kibaki era syndicated loan was paid off mm. right so it comes in it comes less um treasury says the funds are fungible so that you can you know you can exchange what for what for what it's not true you know as per the pfm act at that time it wasn't true but what it introduces is certain bad behavior mm. but i think people don't appreciate that if two billion dollars hits a country's economy 200 billion shillings yes at, at, that, time, at, at that time at that time yes. mm. you'll feel it you'll feel it you'll feel it you'll see it somewhere right but where did we see that impact right so mtu anasema oh tunajanga barabara but where is the money that you you understand well 
what when when Kenya was going mm. into the international debt market mm-hmm. and floating these bonds yeah what did Kenya say it wanted to do with the money just was it to build like roads was it to expand it was, electricity it was supposed connectivity to, it was supposed was to fund it? it was supposed to fund interest, infrastructure projects right. last mile mm. all of that but you see that hiyo ni kusema what is the actual what does the actual budget say that it did mm. right mm. what does it say that this money was taken from here and it funded it this? funded this road there was a time a ps from i think the roads ministry said that 21b has been spent on this road on that road yeah. this road but again he was asked show us yeah. show us the ledgers show us uh, where this show us a breakdown they can't mm. You see they can't show 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 that because how can you track money that has come and been commingled with other funds right. and you haven't you haven't assigned um a specific pro- a project for that money that's the problem so it may very well be right to 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 give these guys a bone it may very well be that this money was spent legitimately mm. but we can't see it you understand and that's the point of having these laws and this is the auditor general who's saying this yes it's but, the auditor general and for me i think that's where the, the problem lies mm. because we can we can talk for years about how okay yeah. we, there's this money we cannot find it yeah. you know this person cannot explain mm. but for the conversation to end there mm-hmm. is the issue exactly because when you come tomorrow mm. because this is a real life situation what we're dealing with today yeah if money has come into the country that was supposed to be able to do 1 2 3 4 5 mm. it did not yeah. okay okay it came in mm. but what it went to do it would appear went to do something else exactly today you're met with a problem that those funds could easily well have sorted out mm. but then you come back to your people and say well you know what we're going to have to do mm. because we don't have enough money mm. we're going to have to raise a tax here yeah. we're going to have to double a vat here mm-hmm. in order to get some extra funds but the money in excess mm. of what you actually need mm. to make those things happen was in the country at some point at some point at some and point the questions yes. are being asked they're not being answered mm. no action is being taken mm-hmm. because which pot is going to call the kettle black so I, that's hey you guys today i think the coffee you drank has uh, something uh, uh. in it <laughs> because that's that's actually the crux of the, the issue here nobody is innocent no one mm. right everybody has dirt or blood on their hands mm. so perhaps you know and i'm just suggesting this perhaps this is a moment to now come and say we are all unclean yeah. sinners mm. before the lord <laughs> and we must now find a way to be able to put that behind us see there's an expression every every saint has a past mm. every sinner has a future, future. right so <laughs> you understand so is that the point that we have reached but for us to really make a break with that and say okay fine you guys stole all of us we stole mm. right but we will not we we'll won't, we'll we'll won't look at that too much we won't steal again and we'll let's move forward mm. it needs honesty it needs yeah. for all of us to be honest yeah you have to you must confess mm. and that's the thing that is completely missing in this conversation today and none of the political leadership who are all dirty mm. will want us to have that conversation yeah all right they won't and they'll just shut the box the way they're doing it now yeah. we'll talk about beyaunga mm-hmm. they know why the beyaunga is the way it's it is high. they know why we do not have you know we have to pay so much money yeah. back to eurobond next year yeah. that's that exact about how much to be mm-hmm. next year we mm-hmm. need to pay it back they mm-hmm. know it didn't go anywhere into this country yes but they will not talk about that they yes. just keep telling you where we uh, where we where we exactly oh, yeah. 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 cross this line you know? Mm. you know but then it begs the question mm. why is it then mm. that we as kenyans when we speak so eloquently about these matters we speak with understanding mm. we communicate understanding why is it then that we are stuck in a position and we know we are not statues we are stuck mm. i mean why why don't we move forward with it can i can i suggest um a, a possible answer yes i think um that acquiescing that you know saying akinyi mmetufanya vibaya lakini ni sawa tu it's uh, it's part of we've been accultured to do that now what we must do is to recognize that we also are in a cultural moment here where 
the values that we have now come to espouse are coming into conflict with the life that we are leading. So life is hard, but you can't change it because the values that you espouse just do not correspond with where you want to go. Mm -hmm. So you're saying life is hard, but yes, you'll be the same person who's looking for, you know, a tender here, yeah. a side deal like there. A opportunity. We call, opportunity. We call them opportunities. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> what you're saying yeah. is, <laughs> what we then witness or see among ourselves is mm. a coping mechanism. Yes. Ah. So we've coped with our silence, we've coped with our acquiescing, but what we need to recognize is that it's not going to help us much longer. But then don't you then see it, that mm -hmm. if we take this view, mm -hmm. and it sounds to me like a very logical view, then in essence we are actually not protecting the politicians, we're protecting ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because if we've been part and parcel of this rot at our own level, yep. at our various levels, at various times, mm. then the conflict that we must have with these matters prevents us from actually taking exactly. a stand because exactly. essentially we'll be taking a stand against ourselves yes mm. because it is taking time to look into the mirror and saying what part did we play did i play mm. in this right what part of my history is not clean what skeleton do i have in my closet what thing have i allowed to happen that essentially has set in in in, in into process a chain of events that have led us here now, it's not me trying to moralize because all of us, all of us are guilty. Mm. I think uh, Wandi Anjoya was making this point. Mm. The system is rotten, but we cannot moralize. You understand? Yeah. We cannot stand and say, we nimbai, we nimbai, because all of us at some point in time have played a part in this. Yeah. So the big conversation that we must have as a country is that, okay, sour. How? do we then now create a new culture? Mm. And cultures are born from the margins of, of society. But we must do so, John. We must. And we must we must do so by first of all acknowledging the degree of culpability. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes. I mean there are those that actually participated in mm. scheming mm. to steal mm -hmm. and they stole. Mm. All right. Our uh, acquiescence is our sin. Yes. Our uh, cheering and clapping for them mm. because of the small screen that they had given that's our sin that's our sin but we did not mm. we did not say let's all go to the european market okay and float a fake bond mm. we did not say mm. let us take that money mm. and steal it we did not say let's amend this law so that then we can pay ourselves out mm. there we did not say mm. there's somebody who did mm. and we must pinpoint that person mm -hmm. and hang them at the cross did did we as as it said in the law did we aid and abet uh, no not, not yeah. directly yeah, not directly actually not directly mm, not, not but, even not directly mm. you see if as individuals we all bear our own cross so to speak mm. since our analogy today seems to be biblical mm. then we acknowledge i bribed the policeman yeah i made sure i bribed the headmaster mm. i that's mine mm. now it doesn't mean I then eliminate myself from the people who can point and say, you know, actually, that's mine. Mm. But yours is this. Yeah. Because the crimes we speak of, these, our laws even distinguish them. Mm. They are what we call petty crimes. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So, so what, what I think needs to happen in our politics right now, it, it's that, you know, in the art of war, a golden bridge, mm. right? For your enemy to, to you cross. know, so that nobody feels like they've lost, mm. Right. Each of us now go back with our pride intact. But then what needs to happen next is, okay, so now we say where the bodies are buried. And everybody puts their hands up. And you're, a and God, you're clearly a God-fearing man. Yeah. Yes. Why? Why? No, no. Huh? I, 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 I am a lot more vindictive than yeah. you. No, no. <laughs> we, even I am not accepting this. <laughs> Let me, no, I'm saying. No, no. no this what the court. And there's the Arusha court. That's what yeah, I'm right. saying. Gashasha is for us now. No, 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 no. We, what we, I'm we, saying we is, voted for these guys. What I'm we saying this, is, this. let <laughs> us, us take some buggers to Arusha and for say, a, you guys, yes. you financed the butchering of our people. That's yes. true. Let us take what I'm Kabuga or wherever he is for now. This, for this current oh. situation that we're in right now, what was saying, okay, sir, to my piman and guvu, none is stronger than the other. Go back to your barracks. Mm -hmm. Now then, we say, okay now let us account for where these bodies are buried and everybody on every side must put their hand up and accept the consequences of what it is that they have done if you if you stole money if you stole billions 
if you financed violence mm. you understand mm. if you engineered the stealing of an election <clears throat> then you must pay and it doesn't matter who it is you are in society yeah whether you are the former president the current president the de- former prime minister anybody of that level you must pay yeah because that is o- that's the only way that i guess kenyans will be given license to then now breathe afresh mm. john yeah there's a president in east africa mm. called paul kagame yes every time he's referred to people talk about authoritarian rule dictatorship mm. that president clearly demonstrate what a president who has his people's interest at heart does mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. you see the rule of law it actually works mm. the human element that sometimes doesn't bring about perfection it always exists but you see it mm. Mm-hmm. You may say they are false again you'd say where human beings are they must be false otherwise they, they can't false. possibly be human beings yeah, yeah. but you see mm. it's not something that you talk about and it isn't part of a riddle it yeah. is as clear as daylight yeah. mm. I was okay. there I was uh, good example I was there in uh, February yes. and I was doing a training there mm. and me for the first time in Africa mm. I saw two people who were stopped by a cop because they crossed the road in the wrong place. Come on. Pedestrians. Pedestrians. Me I looked There's at that the wrong cop. Place. I looked at those guys. <laughs> they were remorseful. The mm. cop gave them a tongue lashing. They went on their way. But that level of respect I had never seen anywhere else. Now we I have my own views about, you know, governance in Rwanda, but you're right. There is a demonstration that things work. and they work for the common good what works for the common good here in mm. our country there is no such thing as a common good because mm. the existence of it are remnants that were cast in history mm. <clears throat> when you look at the coping mechanisms that we have adopted yeah towards people who have committed crimes against humanity mm-hmm. the humanity here is their own citizens yeah yeah and we seem to usher them along mm. we are seriously damaged property because mm. that is not something that any right thinking person should tolerate mm-hmm. but i have to ask because i'm conflicted you know for everything <clears throat> that brings about such a situation there's a mm. precipice that people then cross mm. something must have happened in order for somebody to then exist in a different kind of space mm. right mm-hmm. if we're using the example of Rwanda and saying mm. look look at how things what happened something broke the camel's back mm. and i keep saying that if there's going to be some count, some kind of accountability by the people mm. that is demanded of those who lead and those who govern there's a point that must be reached mm. whereby people are not taking any more prisoners mm. and i don't think kenya is there yet i don't think that mm-hmm. Uh, and it sounds terrible but i don't think you've gotten to that point mm. whereby you're saying look man this is it yeah mm. there is no basement mm. we are at the bottom until it gets there where mm. people have said you know what this kind of nonsense mm. cannot happen anymore mm. you don't see it happening no. mm. i think we're heading there mm. Mm. if you listen to what john alan namu is saying mm. mm-hmm. if you listen to what a friend from ghana mm. uh, leonardo mateo was saying If you listen to what Kinajimi and Jege have been saying and mm. others we are heading there getting mm. there Now, the important there thing it'll, it'll mm. is eventually. once we mm. hit that rock bottom to acknowledge and to identify what brought us there, there. Mm. so that sure. then yes. we are able to pick ourselves out of it mm. and i think that's what's happening yeah so it's important that we keep having this conversation because Absolutely. for sure mm. we are heading into we're that heading there. we're heading into mm. that point so the, when mm. we get there all of us will know okay yeah, yeah. maybe at the rock bottom yeah this is what happened we got into this vessel the mm. vessel whatever d- it did and we are at the bottom of the ocean I mean, looking oh, yeah. at stories that you've written mm. you, the stories that you've produced over time talking about the different ills that have rocked society mm. here there over and over again this is information that people have consumed yeah it's deposited yeah it's deposited it's deposited this stuff that we are talking about is esp look it's espionage mm. look, i mean look, whatever you want to call it mm. it's big time it is it's huge it is in the public arena mm. people are now consuming it and saying my goodness mm. this is actually this is actually where we are yeah what you do that information then is equally as important but the question is yeah 
people who are consuming it, people who are listening to you, people who are watching this, people who are listening to the control of budget say the shocking things that she says. The mm. Auditor General say the shocking things that she says. The revelations that Jimmy Wajig is making, mm. the things that you're saying. What then do you do with that information? As you take it, mm. what do you do with it? You you must be... There's a, let me let me give another expression. I'm full of expressions today. Mm. Um, there's a, there's there's one that I'll use from a Bob Marley song, right? So, in in the presence of water, the fool is thirsty, right? Mm. Meaning that we have all of the information that we need to make the decision that we're supposed to make. We need to now be the person who says, "Okay, sour, ndio imajiote. Either I drink or I perish." Mm. And and globally globally we are reaching that tipping point we are reaching that tipping point mm. everywhere across the world that i look there is some sort of a conversation that has vignettes of what we're talking about today and you may call it you know a very you may call it fatalism you may call it um, god's hand in in moving things but certainly this global cost of living crisis mm. the war climate change um, and then now the local politics of every country are really finally lifting the veil on what kind of leadership that everybody has been exposed to and what it is that we want. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're having even discussions about um, the inf international financing infrastructure yeah. being best fit for people of a certain skin color who come <laughs> from a certain um, part, you know, of, part the of the hemisphere, <laughs> live mm -hmm. above a certain hemisphere, and those conversations are not just are not just like um, sort of like cult conversations that are being had or conspiratorial. They're they're actually being had on the main stage. Then you can tell that people across the, the world are waking up, and even here. And and this is a beauty. My 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 colleague Elijah Kanye and I were just thinking about this situation, and one thing he said was very astute. The best thing that Kibaki did for this country was make education free because at some level people understand and can question what is happening so the mm. potential to do what it is you're suggesting do mm. exists here in this country it exists everywhere in this country not just in nairobi you're hearing the kind of quality of questions that people on the street are asking of their leaders in malindi in tana river you are you're hearing the same kinds of questions in mandera and moyale that's an important moment because then maybe we can recognize that the nation state that we had been taught to believe in, that mm. is Kenya, did not exist. Mm. That we were micro nations just forced together by laws and colonialism. Mm. But that culturally and economically and socially, we now have a new bond. We are now prisoners of the same kinds of, you know, of the same jailer. And in there, there is some sort of camaraderie that we can build with one another and say, okay, Sawa, mm. this is now the conversation that we need to have. This is where to, we need to go. We shouldn't let it be captured and led by the very people who've been our jailers for a long time. Mm. It should come from us, and it's coming from us. Abbas. Mm. Very mm. well put. <laughs> Very well put. You know, yeah. there's nothing else to add. <laughs> <laughs> John Aladnamu and African yeah. Censored have worked on a series of uh, stories revolving around our debt crisis as a country. And now it's coming out, uh, two episodes already up on YouTube, Indebted, yep. Kenya's Journey to a Debt Crisis. Just mm. go and search for that on YouTube and you watch it. They're too short, but 13 minutes. I've been told that. I've uh, been yeah. told that. No sooner. Yeah. Uh, you started enjoying and then that, it's over. Uh, uh, you know, there are things that you enjoy enjoy in, in sips in and sips. in uh, pole, pole, pole. and then you have to wait for two weeks now yeah. to watch the, but there are two episodes already so at yeah. least uh, 26 minutes yeah, yeah. There's of, 30 content minutes of content to digest yes. to digest yeah. first and yeah. then you will now you'll give us now the tough ones <laughs> and they're coming this That's next right. one mm. prepare yourselves Asante, yeah. this is the situation room the only way to start your day